I want to start this episode by clearing something up. I was not your average American Daisy doing spelling. I would never stoop to that fool. I was a lot cooler. I did the geography bee. Now the spelling bee is the most useless competition on the planet. I mean, why do we even need spelling? We've got spell checkers. We've got those beautiful red squiggly lines telling me every time I misspell a word. I mean, I even have Google Drive completing entire phrases and sentences for me. All right. And you know what? A few years ago, uh, during the National Spelling Bee or whatever, they ran out of words. I mean, can you imagine that? The moderator was, just, was like, okay, your word is Ziziva. And the kid was like, Z, Y, Z, Z, Y, V, A. Correct. And with that, we have come to the end of the Oxford English Dictionary. Anyway, I did Geography B throughout uh, elementary and middle school. Uh, but when I got to high school, you can't participate in the Geography B. But I wanted to stay connected. At that time, my middle school was getting overrun by these Spelling Bee geeks. In fact, there was even a Hollywood movie on the Spelling Bee. So I was like, no more of this. We need to make a stand. We need to spread the gospel. I went to my middle school history teacher and said, we need to train for the state championship of the Geography Bee. And she was like, okay, you are very into this. What do you propose? And I said, I've got a plan here. I've thought it all out. We're gonna go over physical geography, political geography, economic geography, cultural geography. You know, there's so many relevant things you learn through geography, unlike spelling. I mean, like I before E except after C. That's not even true. That's not even true, by the way. Anyway, we did make it to the state championship. Uh, we all had a great time. But the deeper lesson here is knock on doors, right? Don't be mired in red tape and bureaucracy. A process may not exist. I mean, no high school student had before taught a middle school class. But um, passion won out. So if there's something that you're passionate about, just go for it. Alrighty, so there was another episode in which um, uh, teaching really helped me, this time regarding the SAT. So my parents really wanted me to prepare for the SAT in the summer before 11th grade. Uh, their target score for me was a perfect 2400. What else? So I did a lot of practice problems. I reviewed all my mistakes. Uh, my mom drove me to the center three times a week to do practice tests. So I trained and I trained and I trained and I mastered all the fundamentals and then I took that exam and I nailed uh, 2200. My parents uh, were disappointed to say the least. And they were like, we dropped everything in India and came to the US for this butcha and uh, look at how he repays us with a, with a 2200. Um, I was crestfallen. Thankfully, my SAT instructor came to the rescue. She knew my situation and said, Rahul, I want you to come into the center and teach the other kids. I was like, uh, okay, how's this gonna help? She's like, trust me on this. Now, this was extremely smart. First of all, because she got me to pay her to do her work, all right? I guess I did get a free economics lesson in the bargain. But she was right, because in the process of teaching others, my conceptual understanding got sharper and sharper and sharper. And when I took it again, almost a year later, I did hit the perfect target score. So what's the lesson here? Again, don't be constrained by red tape and bureaucracy. There are always creative ways of doing things. Don't go down the conventional path. And teaching is the best way to learn. Nobody exhibited this better than the grandfather of science fiction, one of the smartest, most prolific authors of the 20th century. He wrote over 200 books. Isaac Asimov, uh, a brilliant gentleman. What he would do when he was teaching uh, is sign up to teach a course that he knew nothing about, you know, like anthropology or sociology, even though he was a chemist. 
and he would just read and stay one week ahead of the class and teach everything he knew. And in that process, he would learn so many new subjects. And that was uh, a key to the brilliance of his writing. All right, so this is a great lesson. Uh, think about how you can teach in order to learn better. If you have some ideas, put them in the comments and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.